So I stopped by Harbor Freight to get some more heat sink material for making battery packs. Uh, heat sink so I can bolt the MOSFETs to them. And I'm using this, it's just three quarter uh, by eighth inch angle iron or angle aluminum. And I thought, well, hey, I'll go by Metal Supermarkets and I'll just stop by the scrap bin. And that is a big mistake when you go there because you always end up finding stuff you didn't know you needed. Just like this 16th inch uh, angle aluminum right here. And I thought to myself, is it a matter of the thermal mass that's going to make the biggest difference or is it surface area of the heat sink? If it's surface area, then this 16th inch material won't make a bit of difference. It'll work just as good as the 8th inch material. But um, if it's a matter of thermal mass, it's going to make a difference. So I thought, well, let's just go ahead and cut a one MOSFET sized piece of each one. And I've got my test set up ready to go over there anyway. Um, we can go ahead and maybe we can use this thermometer and a stopwatch and see how long it takes the temperature to rise to how much and find out if one heat sink's really gonna be any better than the other. Let's see. So I've marked out the heat sinks and I'm just cutting them by hand here on the bandsaw. It's a quick little thing. Um, this is a bandsaw I just made a little table for. It's an old, old Enco bandsaw. And it's just a piece of uh, big thick steel that uh, I drilled some holes in. Uh, but it's real convenient for doing little things like this. You just stand it up on end and um, there you go. Down and dirty. Got a couple of heat sinks. Then I'll put them over here in the drill press. Something I discovered a while ago is if I line the first heat sink up with the edge of the vise um, and then get the hole markings right. The next heat sink after that I can just go ahead and stick in the same place lined up with the edge of the vise and um, then when I drill the hole it'll automatically be in the right place. But the uh, bottom of these look pretty nasty and it's gonna be time to deburr them. So I just stick a big sharp drill bit in there and makes quick work of it. Okay, so here's our test setup. This is our variable power supply. This we can vary the amperage with so we can control how much goes into the MOSFET. Here's our breadboard to plug the MOSFET in. This is a variable power supply that is going to feed 5 volts to the gate of the MOSFET. Now, the, the uh, battery pack is 12.6 volts, which is what this is set for. You can see it if you turn up the amperage. Um, but the gate on this is only 5 volts because that is what the BMS outputs is 5 volts. So I wanted to test, and, and I did this, and make sure that we're not driving these MOSFETs in a linear region. And we're not. They don't start to go linear until 4 volts which that's actually about a 20% margin, that full one volt. So we're safe there. So um, what we need to do first is select a MOSFET out of this bag, just completely at random. We're going to use the same MOSFET for all the tests. And that one's got some bent legs. That one's kind of scruffy looking. Oh, there we go. It looks like a good looking, completely random MOSFET. All right, so let's get a baseline test first. Now, all I have to do is hold this with one hand, turn up the current with the other, and start the stopwatch with my third. I think we're going to have to make a compromise. OK, we got 10 amps going. So after a minute, it looks like we're reading about 100 degrees on this MOSFET. 
It sure does feel hotter than that. We'll just see if we can repeat the same results with these two heat sinks. Okay, I've cooled down the MOSFET. So I think what we're gonna do is start with the heavy heat sink first and see what happens. <clears throat> so I guess what we need first is a little bit of thermal grease. Again, you always end up using too much. It doesn't seem to matter how little thermal grease you put on there. Stuff likes to ooze out. I'm trying to do this so that you guys can see everything. Okay, so this one is ready to go. Make sure nothing is touching. Okay, so we had a temperature over 100 degrees with that. And I can tell you, this MOSFET is a whole lot cooler. Than what it was before. So something's not working right. Well, let's try the other heat sink, see what happens. I think we are ready to go. Alright. And how does it feel? Yep, it definitely got hotter. It got hotter. Let's go ahead and take this MOSFET, pull the heat sink off, do that test one more time, see if we can get a more accurate heat reading. It looked like on the thermometer we were 5 to 10 degrees hotter with the smaller heat sink. And that's kind of what it felt like. So, let's get going. Okay. I think we got a little more accurate reading that time. It peaked almost 140 degrees. And that is ow, what that feels like. So apparently the little aiming laser is off. All right, I think we found out something. So these are decent MOSFETs, and I think they, we did find out that they do benefit from a good heat sink. Um, and I didn't think it was going to make a huge difference how thick the heat sink was, because I didn't think necessarily it was going to be thermal mass, because as the MOSFET heats up and the heat sink heats up, the warmer the heat sink is, the more temperature differential you're going to have between it and the surrounding air. So the faster it's going to dissipate heat. And a lot of that is a function of surface area. Thermal mass is just going to make a difference as to how much heat it can absorb before it heats up. Um, <clears throat> it did make a difference. The, uh, the thinner heat sink, the one with less mass, um, it got, yeah, what? five, 10 degrees hotter. Uh, but this right here, without a heat sink, 140 degrees. Either heat sink, we were a little above 100 degrees. Um, so, I don't know if it's worth it for the thicker heat sink. It might be, it might not be. I guess it depends on how long you plan to pull how many amps. And what is the cost difference? 
I haven't bought any new material in a while, and I need to go back to metal supermarkets and get some more of that thicker material. I know that if I got my druthers, it's probably not that much more expensive to order the thicker heat sink material. So, there you go. The thicker material dissipates more heat, keeps the MOSFET cooler. Hey, get out there and make something.